So the fibers that, the, the primary afferents that carry nociceptive information, information that under normal circumstances can lead to a perception of pain, are called nociceptors, a, a term coined by Ed Pearl, uh, who also uh, discovered along with uh, ego, so Pearl and, I don't know, uh, uh, ego uh, separately discovered, independently discovered uh, nociceptors at around the same time. Um, so nociceptors can be divided into a few different categories. Uh, the the um, high threshold mechanoreceptors, which are responsive to uh, very sharp, um, uh, very noxious uh, deformation of the skin, these are the, the receptors that are going to um, be responsive to, say, a needle prick. Uh, these are uh, receptors that are going to be responsive to a, a, a bang, a, a bang on the um, on the skin, on a bruise, bruising bang, and these are are carried by a delta fiber, so relatively fast. So if you bump your your toe on, if you stub your toe on something, the information that you that you just stubbed your toe, that's coming through these. Uh, A-delta high-threshold mechanoreceptors, or HTMs. Now, there is the other major type of um, nociceptor are these polymodal nociceptors. And the polymodal nociceptors are C-fibers, so they're really slow. So when you stub your toe, you find out that you stubbed your toe, and then it's only a moment later, a demonstrable second or two later, because of the slow transmission of action potentials by C fibers, that it starts, oh, that hurts. Oh, ouch. That achy hurt. And this is response, this is typically uh, termed first pain and second pain, and first and second in time. There are also a group of thermoreceptors. These uh, typically, uh, these are C fibers. Um, these are coding for temperature changes in the non-noxious range. And a, uh, another type of um, uh, uh, primary afferent are pruroreceptors. These are responding to, say, histamine. They're, they, their activation will lead to a perception of itch. And these are also C fibers. They're very slowly uh, uh, conducting. So they are, uh, they are conducting at around 0.5 meters per second. Now, the polymodal nociceptors, which are abbreviated as PMNs, are jack of all trades. They, they're just going to respond to any bad thing going on, no matter what it is. Whether it's a noxious mechanical uh, stimulus, you've really damaged, there's been actual trauma, physical contact trauma, or whether it is a noxious, uh, uh, a noxious um, temperature, so way too cold or way too hot, You're, you touch the stove or you touch dry ice, this is going to travel. This information is going to be transduced by the polymodal nociceptors, and um, finally, they're also sensitive to chemicals. So they're sensitive to chemicals that are in the body, such uh, the chemicals that occur, uh, that are released when cells rupture. So t ultimately, tissue damage can rupture cells. The contents of that and the contents of of the blood vessels spills out, and these polymodal nociceptors are very excited by all of that, by, say, potassium, by bradykinin, serotonin, all these normal components of, uh, of injured tissue will excite the polymodal nociceptors. So the way that these, um, these afferents end is in bare... They have bare endings, and these bare endings are chock full of uh, different uh, um, different receptors that are sensitive to different t 
types of tissue damage, and that's what we're going to look at in the next um, uh, video. But for right now, I want to just highlight how you can get problems in one or another of these different types of uh, afferents. And one uh, common way for this, well, it's not a common condition, but it is uh, the way that you get these um, affected preferentially are through the hereditary sensory autonomic neuropathies. And this is a group that includes the congenital insensitivity to pain. And congenital insensitivity to pain is a deficit in all of these. And I put up the thermoreceptors, even though these are not nociceptors, these are thermoreceptors. They're, they're responsive to, as I said, innocuous changes in temperature. Because all of these are uh, developmentally related, they're all small fibers, they're all small diameter fibers, as opposed to the A beta fibers that serve touch, proprioception, and vibration. And so when the developmental program for these goes for these and these goes off, these are also affected. And there's one other group of, of fibers that's also affected, and it's not, they're not afferents at all, but these are um, C fibers that are postganglionic sympathetic fibers to the sweat glands. So these uh, so, for instance, the condition of congenital insensitivity to pain can come with or without damage to these postganglionic sympathetic fibers. If these fibers are damaged, then the person has not only an insensitivity to pain, but they do not sweat. If these are not damaged, then the person has congenital insensitiv insensitivity to pain without what's called anhydrosis, without the lack of sweating. All right, so what we're now going to do is look in particular at these um, uh, nociceptors and at the molecules that enable these nociceptors to respond to any type of tissue damage, any noxious stimulus. Mm -hmm.